Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to This Is Life On The World's Most Remote Island. And I love these types of videos and these types of places. These unique places that are in the middle of nowhere that people live in. Or just fascinating places that people live in. Not necessarily just this. But obviously this is, this is what I'm reacting to now. I just love this sort of stuff. It really fascinates me as to how... Firstly, day-to-day -day life would be living somewhere like this, but also how people ended up living somewhere so far from everything. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it. We're going to check this out and learn about this place. I'm seeing here it's Tristan de Kuna. So I have heard of this place. I was thinking it was going to be the Falkland Islands, but I think that's nowhere near as remote because it's quite close to the coast of Argentina. It's just far from the country that it's part of, obviously, um, Great Britain or the UK. Um but yeah, we're going to check this out and see. And I'm excited to get into this because I do really love these types of videos where you learn about these weird, wacky places that people live. I say weird because it's just so unique. But um, let's jump into this. Hopefully you're going to enjoy and let's check this out. 1,491 miles or 2,399 kilometers from Cape Town, South Africa lies the world's most remotely inhabited island. This small island in the absolute middle of the Atlantic Ocean is only accessible by an eight day long boat trip that departs from Cape eight Town day. and makes its way to Tristan da Cunha just nine times a year. With just one island store, a single post office, one cafe, one pub, one very small school, 11 different guest houses available to stay at, and 120 private homes that house the island's 268 residents, Oh, it's very, it's a very low population. Only 268 people that live there. It is truly hard to believe that people actually live on this extremely remote island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The island was discovered in 1506 by a Portuguese admiral. The Portuguese attempted to build settlements on the land in both the 17th century and also in 1810, but were unsuccessful. Finally, in 1816, a group of 20 military men from Great Britain were able to build a settlement on Tristan da Cunha. Living so isolated from the rest of the world in a rather extreme climate proved to be very difficult for these men. So less than a year after the settlement was officially formed, the British military withdrew its troops from the island, leaving just three brave soldiers who refused to leave. These soldiers figured out ways to survive on the island and were eventually joined by shipwrecked sailors that would stumble upon the rock in the middle of the Atlantic. Eventually, by 1886, the island had transformed from three brave men into 97 inhabitants comprised mostly of lost sailors. This is also the time when the island got its official name, Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. Edinburgh. Things were going well for the residents of the island until 1961, where an eruption of the island's volcano... Th oh, this is the place of the volcano. Oh, um, mate. So, yeah, living here with a volcano, when the volcano is pretty much the entire land, is flipping mental. Again, i got to rate it, but... That. Threatened the settlement, forcing all 198 residents to evacuate to England. Two years later, the volcano. Oh wait, so people here are also considered British as well? Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, maybe I saw it before. I just forgot. It subsided, and all 198 residents moved back onto the island. It was then the island started booming. A new harbor was built in 1965, allowing fishing boats to come in and out easier. Roads were being established across the town. A hospital was built, and electricity, hospital water, down. and sewage facilities were constructed at this time. Love Tristan that. da Cunha was seeing tremendous growth. That was until 2001. On Monday, May 21st, 2001, it was a murky morning, overcast, and raining with a stiff breeze. Work had begun normally on the island, but at 9am, the seas became a whirlwind of white water with heavy winds coming out of the southeast. By 11am, the storm evolved into nothing ever seen before on the island, where all the workers were instructed by the leaders on the island to stop working and head home immediately. The wind became stronger and stronger, eventually ripping many of the roofs off the buildings. Jeez. By noon, residents were seen running from one building to another, seeking shelter, and doing anything they could to prevent the doors and roofs from being blown away by the wind. 
By 12.30 p.m., all men were told to report to the hospital to salvage the hospital equipment and try and prevent any more destruction to the building. The storm continued to ravish for an entire day, causing tremendous damage to the majority of the buildings on the island. That night, the inhabitants of Edinburgh sheltered together nervously with the only light being provided by candles and with their feet sitting inches deep in muddy water. The day after the storm, despite some wind and rain persisting, the residents worked non-stop to repair the homes of the buildings that were destroyed from the storm. And although the island hasn't seen a storm of this magnitude since 2001, Edinburgh still receives a good deal of tropical storms. Oh, Today, wow. the island of Tristan da Cunha has 245 residents, which is down from its population of 264 in 2010. Much of this decrease in population is due to rising prices and the harsh storms that provide a relatively tough way of living. Tristan da Cunha does receive a few tourists each year, mainly coming from cruise ship excursions. The water gets pretty shallow close to land, so the ships have to dock about a mile from land and then allow smaller boats to transport the supplies and people onto the land. This can be tricky with how rough the waters are in the southern Atlantic, and because of this, there are only roughly 60 days a year where the small boats can make their way onto the island, where they would rest on the dock made up of volcanic rock. Once on the island, there are 11 guest homes to stay at. These guest homes go for 25 pounds a night or 30 US dollars. Damn, they're cheap. I guess it costs a lot to travel there. They're cheap as hell though. I mean, I guess it's a small island, so there's only so much you can do, but that is very cheap. The owners of the home are very clear that 75% of the charge is paid to the island family and 25% goes to the government. The island does feature an ex- well, There's a government on this island or like the British government? Wait, if there's a government on this island, that is so, f I mean, it, it makes sense. It's just fascinating to me. Exclusive guest house called the Traditional Thatched House Museum, which has a beautiful blue door, plenty of land, and you can enjoy lunches brought straight to you at the house by the locals on the island. Oh, come on. This home is a little more expensive, costing 100 pounds or 121 US dollars a night. The island is known for their extremely generous hospitality, however, they don't just want anybody coming onto the island for any wrong reasons. Once potential visitors have an idea as to when they would like to visit, they have to email the secretary of the island and provide reasons for their visit and what they hope to do while on the island. The secretary can either approve or disapprove the potential visitor. Along with the secretary, there are 11 other members that make up the island's government. The leader of the island is known as the resident administrator and is appointed by the governor of St. Helena, another British island in the Atlantic Ocean up to the north. Below the administrator, there is the island council, which is composed of eight elected members and three appointed members. Of these 11 council members, at least one is required to be a woman. There is one full-time police officer and three constables. What? I guess when there's only, there's only that many people living there, that's probably quite a good ratio, to be honest, but... Which is basically a word for a peace officer. <laughs> However, these officers don't... Wait, they've got the same uniform as the, the officers in the UK as well. <laughs> That's class. Typically have to enforce the laws too often, as Tristan da Cunha is known as an extremely safe place. Residents say they can allow their children to run around freely on the island without any supervision, and when the residents are out at work on their potato farms, they typically leave their doors unlocked and windows wide open. The residents all refer to each other as brothers and sisters, acting like one big family. The residents' main source of income is potato farming. The potato farms are about a mile from the town where everyone lives. The residents' way of getting to and from the potato farm is by a free bus, which drives on the only road in the entire island. Um. Land for farming never goes up for sale because every family is given a few fields in the potato patch where they are allowed to grow their crops. Houses also never go up for sale as homes are just passed down from generations generation to generation. Also on the family's land, each home is allowed to own two cows, which is regulated by the island's government to avoid overgrazing. Other animals that are common on the island include rockhopper penguins, rare bird breeds, and unfortunately, mice and rats, which were brought- How did it- I was gonna say they were brought. 
I'm thinking to, thinking to myself, how the hell did mice end up getting here? And it's going to be from import, importing them from, I guess, another country. Why, why would they be imported though? Are they there? Is it like the animal system or the ecosystem? Do they actually benefit in some ways? Not over on these same boats that helped populate the island in the 19. Oh, I guess it was just an accident. I guess the hygiene on the boats was just terrible, and they just got on. That's so wild how they all just multiply so easily. 19th and 20th centuries. The rats and mice pose such a problem that the islanders have created an entire holiday dedicated towards getting rid of the rats, Jeez. which is known as Ratting Day. <laughs> On this holiday, men will team up and compete to see who can catch the most and the biggest rats and mice. Judges fuck? will count the tails of the rats, and then the awards are presented back at the town's Prince Philip Hall for a dance-filled celebration. Here at Prince Philip Hall is where the island's only bar resides which is known as albatross hey he's got a man united shirt what a guy come on bar. the bar is very cheap just one pound or one dollar and 22 cents in us dollars for a drink and always has the nicest locals see i'm wondering how is that the case when they've probably got well, it's what well, not probably they've got to in, they import all of the drinks there how is it so cheap Aside from cheap drinks, the locals can get their food at the Tristan's Island store. There is not much advertising for this store other than the supermarket sign out front, but inside you can find essential products and supplements that are often locally produced. Other Damn. goods need to be ordered months in advance of the arrival of incoming ships, given that there are very few ships that make their way onto the island. You won't be able to find any internet connection on the island other than at the island's internet cafe. They've actually got internet here. How the hell can... I mean, it must be terrible, but how the hell can it... That is wild to me. I mean... I know we live in a world now where internet is the most essential thing, but somewhere like this that is so remote, having, I mean, having internet anywhere in general is mental. I would spend, and I guess if you live somewhere like this, you would not spend much time here because most people I assume you know are in the town, so you don't have to, you don't really care about what's happening around you. I watch, I wonder if they can watch like TV here and stuff. I guess if there's internet, an internet cafe, they can view stuff online like shows and stuff. But like live TV, I assume you probably can't watch it, although I don't actually know. Which is on the first floor of the government building. The internet is said to be extremely slow, however, loading just 200 kilobytes per second, which probably <sighs> wouldn't be even fast enough to load this video. Although, residents and especially children aren't attached to the internet like we are nah. here in my home country of the United States. Must be refreshing. At the end of the day, it is truly hard to conceptualize how different life would be here on the world's most remote island. The island has surely had its fair share of trials, but the kind residents of Edinburgh continue to live and prosper in their everyday lives. Do you think you can live here? I love this place. I really have like a... A place in my heart of this place i don't know i mean i do know why like firstly it's so just remote it's just a different world they just live a completely different life to what other humans live and i just love places like this where there's just a fascination like a fascinating thing about it and it gives me a fascination to learn more and see more places like this because i mean there's it's not the same but there's obviously you've got like the falkland islands he said st helena i guess people live there as well um the Maldives, the capital city in the Maldives is a place that blows my mind. Um, other people may not care, but for me, it's just the way it looks. It's just in the middle of the ocean, and then it's just this massive city. It's just literally slap bang in the middle of the ocean, and then there's just this massive city right here. And it's, these sorts of things just baffle me. There's the place in Colombia. Colombia. Columbia, small town in ocean. Oh, what's it called? It's a really, really small town. It's not going to come up. I don't know what it's called. But just these kinds of places. I just, I love these sorts of videos. But um, I'm going to ask if any of you, if any of you have been here, what was it like? I'm going to assume none of you have, but yeah, I enjoyed this reaction, hopefully you did as well, and let me know some more wild places to live, like another one is like Barrow in Alaska, they've changed the name, I forgot what they changed the name to, 
but that's just such a remote place it's such a cold place it's just different ways of life i just love seeing these places i don't know i just have a real fascination for this but yeah if you have more of these reactions i can or videos i can see and react to please suggest them in the comments but yeah until next time like subscribe peace